Ren, Love Man. Confucius, the learned sage, admitted that despite his diligent investigation into the Chinese word Ren, he could not think of anyone who exemplified the bottomless love in Ren. I have not seen a person who was devoted to love, or one who detested what was not love. He who was devoted to love would esteem nothing above it. He who detested what is not love would practice love in such a way that he would not allow anything that is not love to approach his person. Is anyone able for one day to apply his strength to love? I have not seen the case in which his strength would be insufficient. Should there possibly be any such case? I have not seen it. Analex, Book 4, Chapter 6 Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. You are my friends, if you do whatever I command you. Was this the love that had bothered Confucius? Was this the mystery that he had been trying to uncover? If this impeccable love is out of the question for man, then where can it be found? In God, of course. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For if when we were enemies we were reconciled to God through the death of his Son, much more, having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Run, second man. Run, man. Er, two or second. Since we are to love all men, then this divine love is not the relation between two people, but the second man. Who is this second man who can give us this divine or perfect love? The first man was of the earth, made of dust. The second man is the Lord from heaven. The first man was Adam, whom God fashioned from the soil of the earth and installed in the paradise of Eden. The second man was Jesus Christ, who came down from heaven as a man. No one has ascended to heaven but he who came down from heaven, that is the Son of Man who is in heaven. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. Out of his great love, God himself came down from heaven to become the second man, manifesting himself as the Son of God. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. By this we know love, because he laid down his life for us, and we also ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. But whoever has this world's goods, and sees his brother in need, and shuts up his heart from him, how does the love of God abide in him? My little children, let us not love in word or in tongue, but in deed and in truth. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. Our Lord died for us, and we are commanded to love one another as He has loved us, which means that we must die for our brethren. This must be the love that Confucius alluded to, a mission impossible for men, at least. But concerning brotherly love, you have no need that I should write to you, for you yourselves are taught by God to love one another, and indeed you do so toward all the brethren who are in all Macedonia. We can relax and not worry about the mechanics on how to love one another. God will teach us how to love and how to emulate the love of Jesus. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. God manifested himself 
as a father to men. He set the precedence for church leaders and mature Christians, fathers, to follow. He demonstrated sacrificial love by nourishing and caring for the physical and spiritual well-being of his sheep. 